this is Leslie Powers from Alive and Thriving. I have a very special guest with me today, Glenn Tram. And uh, tell me your website again. Oh, my website is thegreatworkexperience.com. Thegreatworkexperience.com. Exactly. And yes. it, is, it is more geared towards uh, the Dutch audience. Um, I am um, also part of the One Great World Network, uh, the same as you, of course, Leslie. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm here to to aid and help as much as we can in, in the great work. Uh, yes, yes. As well for, for others and help others achieve um, a higher state of consciousness. That's right. And, you know, I had a brainstorm um, about this conversation when we were doing our Dissolving the Divide interview. And before we recorded there, you and I were talking a little bit about our ancestry and we have a, a Dutch connection. I have a lot of ancestry from, from the, ne well, from the Netherlands. And, um, you know, I have Scandinavian and Germanic and Celtic, but a lot of Dutch. And um, you, you live in, in Amsterdam, mm -hmm. right? Amsterdam, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we were sharing a little bit about our family histories and and I found it very interesting and you know I think as many many people are getting interested in learning their ancestry uh I you know there's a lot that can come up around that that we have to wrap our he heads around yeah. and uh, I think you know this is a conversation that will touch on some of those difficult subjects you know yeah. To help us to reconcile some of the less appealing um, and more painful and even immoral aspects that's in all our lineage um, yeah. and really highlight, you know, the role that we have as individuals to do healing work around that to help make our world a better place. Yes. Yeah. That's funny that you say that because um, for me, it's, it's it has been always a double-edged sword. I, I, it is the only way I can describe it because I have both blood in me. So I have and the, ens the enslavers and enslaved blood uh, running through my vein. So it, it has always been a, a struggle. I think that is why the message of uh, freedom, it's, uh, it's some, for me, it's, it's the ultimate gain. It's the ultimate um, uh, goal. It should be the ultimate goal for everybody's life. I think now we are living in a very... Um, yeah, fake freedom-like community. Um, they say it's freedom, but if you really pay, pay attention, it's not freedom at all. It's a different form of slavery. And I would even say it has been perfected. It is a perfect uh, form of slavery right now uh, we are in. And um, that is, um, yeah, unfortunately, our, our state that, that current human condition are in right now. So, yeah. Yeah. So where should we start? Should we share a little bit about our own stories and then uh, start there and then get into some history or what order would you like to do? Yeah, well, I would love to start with a little bit of of the history of the Dutch slave trade. I think the Dutch slave trade has been uh, is a very it was a very significant player. And uh, this story that I'm going to be telling, it's um, well, a lot, of, a lot of it is not always readily available for, for the average human being. I think from the Caribbean colonies of the Dutch um, kingdom, um, it has been, it's just not available. Uh, you really need to dig, I mean, yeah, you have to go. There are some stories out there, you know, the, the, the log books of the um, enslavers, they are available, I think, somewhere in Den Haag. Um, but you have to, you have to do your, like, you have, to, you have to travel a little bit to get those things because they are not, uh, not all of them are readily available online. So you, you will have to do your homework. And, but uh, fortunately, some of, some of the stories that I have, well, actually I, I got, I got a lot from Holland itself from, from the, in the Netherlands. I got a lot of information from there, but the funny thing is that my father used to tell me stories as well from his father. And, uh, and we did some, some research, genealogy research as well uh, in the Netherlands, as well as on Curaçao, because Curaçao is the place that I was born, which is a, actually a colony of the Dutch kingdom. Um, and you will see all these people living in these colonies. They, 
they moved to a certain point in life as well to the Netherlands. But a lot of people from the Netherlands as well um, invested themselves. So they, they went on the colonies to live and to, to do certain mission or whatnot. So uh, I'm a product of that, you can say. And um, well, I am very happy that I am a product of that because now I understand both sides, you know? And that is for me a very uh, unique position to, 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 to view things as well. And I must say to you, it's both sides. The freedom part is, is for both. Is the, because even the, the ones who were enslavers now are enslaved. That is the message I think today is going to be the most, maybe the most uh, uh, revealing one from this whole conversation. Because uh, like if you are in Holland, they, they still support to a certain degree. They, they do support slavery. They are not, they don't, they don't um, see what their forefathers did. They don't see that as a something that they are doing, but they're still doing it. The, the only difference is that they don't even know they are doing it. That's the, the sad part of it, the whole thing. And um, But because of that, because of their ongoing um, approval of certain practices, which we will be diving into, uh, I hope we have much uh, not enough time to do that, but the, the continual approval of certain practices. Um, I think karmically, they, they themselves, they are slave of the whole system, which is uh, the funniest and saddest part of the whole story. So hopefully, um, I was, I was uh, on, on a few Dutch, pretty good Dutch um, interviews, and I made some things very clear for the audience and uh yeah because uh, this is the thing about the dutch as well that they don't like they are a special kind of people and they have a very left brainish kind of a mindset as well so they are very very good at engineering um organizing like if you go to holland you will be amazed of how organized uh, the whole country is. Um, everything is connected to everything. Um, so that means that you have something that's called a BSN number. I think it's a security, it's an ID. Is a, is the, I think in, in America, you guys have social security number. I think that is the number. So attached to that number in Holland, everything is linked. So even the car you're driving, even the um, uh, um, healthcare, uh, your healthcare uh, um, insurance, um, everything is connected to that number. And it's becoming even more and more prominent to have one. Otherwise, it's not even possible to, to live in, in, in Holland. And then you have things like I'm driving on the, on the highway, for instance. And if you have a fine, which is something that is uh, uh, like, I have a fine for the, uh, for the tax company, for instance, like I own them for like 400 years, something like that. The cops will see that on the screen. Yes, yes. And then they will, they can, they can uh, detain you for, or tell you, yeah, you have to pay this. We're gonna take your car until you pay, et cetera, et cetera. So, this is how, how the, the, the Netherlands has become. This is how far we already are in the, um, this whole enslavement system. But- Yeah, I didn't because, know that. That's- Yeah, that's pretty, that <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it, it's, it, it's incredible. It's just, I call it sometimes, it's just hell. <laughs> you just live in hell. Uh, um, but before, like before the Holland became the, the, the place that it is right today, let's let's talk about the the that involvement in the in the in the slave trade. Actually, it started in the early 16th century, which is a um, uh, and actually they started as a a, a middleman. So they were um, buying slave from the Portuguese traders. And uh, these Portuguese traders, they established themselves in, in West Africa. 
there is a um, in in West Africa uh, on the coast there. There are some forts uh, also belonging to the Dutch uh, 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 in those days, but uh, on the west coast there, there is also a a island. I think it's called Cap Verde. This is a funny thing to say because when I was a few days ago, I was watching a TikTok from a someone from the one of the Dutch colonies, and then they were speaking, and then they were like, they came across one of these Cap Verdean people. And then they say, hey, but your, your language sounds pretty much like my language. Where are you from? I said, where are you from? I said, from the Dutch Caribbean. I said, but how do you, how come do you like, and I find it so fascinating, of not so fascinating and also a sad story at the same time because we don't know our history. Right, I think that's a big point that's worth highlighting that we have really all of us been systematically separated from our history exactly yeah and so if he would know his history he would he would understand that west africa there was a, a place called kafferdians and that language is pretty much similar to our own our own language as well so um and also portuguese is a very big influence on the language in the Caribbean islands. So uh, especially where, where I was born. So yes, you will hear a lot of similarities, a lot of things that, and the people from there are also very, uh, they, they, they behave in a similar ways in similar fashions. Okay, so actually, so, so they, they started as a middleman. That's what, that was the story. They started as a middleman, somebody who just buys slaves, yeah. Uh, from the Portuguese and uh, uh, selling them in, in in the Americas, so that is basically yeah, and uh, this is a the, the Dutch West India Company and the, the, the WIC yeah, it was founded in 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 also in the sixteen something sixteen twenty twenty one or something like that, and it was an instrumental. Um, uh, a part of the Dutch slave trade. So the WIC, the West India, the Dutch West India Company. Uh, when you go to school in Holland, they will not, they don't talk too much about the WIC. They talk a lot of the, 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 the they call it the VOC, which is the, uh, I will say it in Dutch, which is the Verenigde Oost in East India Company. So East Company, the Verenigde Oost. So, United United East Company, you can say. And then they regard the golden age because this is what they teach you at school. The golden age of the Dutch has to do with the VOC, the, 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 the VOC, which is the uh, Union East Company. Uh, in Dutch, you say Verenigde Oost in uh, Oost uh, Indische Company. But it's not true. This is the WIC, this is the West Indian Company. That one was the one that was, being, was doing the slave trade, and the, the money there was way much better than the, the one they got from the VOC. And uh, the VOC, the VW, so the VOC, that one did trade in spices and you know all these other stuff. They got it, they go to India, for instance, they got uh, all types of spices from India, and they transport those things back to to Europe or whoever wants to buy them actually <laughs> because the Dutch were always traders actually they have a very trade minded like a lot of big companies until this day okay they are they have Dutch um, uh, roots so you have to be uh, a lot of the time people don't even know that uh, all the way in America there's a lot of influence of the Dutch um, you just have to pay attention. They are there. Okay. So like in the mid 17th century, uh, the Dutch established several colonies, uh, including Curaçao, which is where I was born. So in the, around 17 centuries. And that became a, a major hub for, uh, you can say, a shipment of slaves. So from there, from Curaçao, so it came, like the boat came from, from West Africa, and then it came all the way down to the Caribbean to uh, Curaçao, okay? And uh, from there, most of the time they, they went as well to another 
countries called Suriname, yeah, uh, where they also took control uh, of that country those days. Yeah, so, uh, Suriname is, is it was it was a colony of the Dutch. It is you can say let's say if you have you know where Brazil is all the way up north there you, you will find Suriname. Uh, people, Suriname people, there are a lot, a lot of them right now as well in, in the Netherlands. But they were they were a colony of of uh, of Holland. Okay, so um, yeah. I was just going to say I don't want to distract your train of thought, but well, just the concept of a colony itself is so immoral, right? It's around you know just claiming another land land yeah. as your own right through for yeah. through violence well this right? is the funny thing about it because uh, there was an act i think it was in uh i don't know i don't know that 2010 or something I, maybe even before that that um all the european countries that has colonies they should it was before that, I think, because in 2010, the colonies became colonies no more, so-called. Um, but it was it was introduced in the European Union as a way to abolish um, the idea of a colony. So the the Dutch introduced to all the so-called colonies uh, the way of become independent. But that's the funny thing, Leslie. Um, this is the way they did it. And this is what I mean with uh, it. It's still in their roots, in their blood to enslave. They, they give things different names, but they're not changing the action. They're not changing the act because you can say, yeah, you're free, but you still, the government is owned and done by Holland. Holland can take over them whenever he wants. And then they do that through different devices like debt, for instance, they say, okay, I'm going to lend you money. And, uh, but uh, then I will, I will tell you, it's the same, it's the same thing. The only thing is that I, I just give you so-called my, your freedom. And I say, yeah, but you have a choice and you have a choice not to, to bring, you know, to take this debt. And now people are not educated and they know that. And then they take this debt and, um, and then you go again. This is how simple is that? It's not that, 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 that difficult, but uh, there are a lot of aspects of the government as well that are being monitored and controlled by the the Dutch. So it's not we're still a colony actually. The way I see it is the, the the whole thing is that we are still in the Dutch in the Dutch kingdom, which is a weird thing. I mean, if we were independent, we shouldn't be in the Dutch kingdom. <laughs> yeah, and you're the other thing about is the that, Netherlands, or you're yes. talking about okay, yeah. Yeah, the Netherlands, okay, so the Netherlands actually right now consists of a few territories, okay? So it's a, it's a little bit, people don't understand it a lot. If you're not accustomed to, to, the, to the way of the kings and those kind of things, we have, a, they have a king. I, I thought, I'm not saying we, because I don't consider that, that person my king in any aspect, um, but uh, they have a king. And um, that is, they call it in the royal house. If the royal house has territories, one of them is Holland, and there are six other uh, territories outside Europe that they have, which is in the Caribbean. They have six islands that they have uh, colonized, and those six islands needed to be to be free. They needed to, you know, become free because they were now in the European Union, and through, uh, based on the European Union rules, they have to respect the, the the human rights, which they are not doing at all. I mean. Many few European countries does that. In any case, they, 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 they sign it and all these things, but they don't even understand what it is. So they think they are following it, but they are not. But in any case, so based on that, they needed to give these colonies their quote unquote freedom, but they are still in the, um, in the Dutch kingdom. So the, the Royal House has territories, all these, these territories, and then these territories, are part of what they call the Dutch kingdom. This is then the, 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 where the king has his influence and where he can, you can say rule. Now, every Dutch person, if you talk to them, they will tell you that the king is just a symbol of the Dutch identity. 
but he has no power. And the funny thing is, I'm in Spain, they have a king as well. They say the same bullshit. <laughs> they say, oh, if he doesn't have power, so what the heck is he doing there? Is this my question? <laughs> yeah. So, Living in, in lush, lavish lifestyle. You know, yeah. Probably. Why do you why do you pay for that? I mean, yeah, yeah I don't understand it. And so, um, so actually, yes. Yeah, so this is like the the the, the, the let you can say the juridical structure of of the Dutch kingdom. And then um, you can see it like this: um, it's a big house, okay. And then there are different rooms in this. And when normally your mom or your dad tells you everything you have to do, even though if you're in your room. Now they created it in such a way to say, okay, you know what? This is still my house. I'm still the boss, but this is your room and you can, you can do whatever you want in your room, except for a few things Then you have to come through me anyway. So what they did is just, they make it a little bit more liberal. So they give you more, like more room to, to say things for yourself, but it's not really freedom. I mean, everybody knows that. I mean, I don't know why we accept it, but this is how people are. They still accept it. Even the Dutch, they still, they still accept those type of uh, things. And and we have like a official. There is also an official. Uh, uh, they call it the King's Day. Okay, it's now the twenty seventh. I think it's twenty seventh of. You know, I don't even know it anymore because I don't follow these things. It was the 27th of March, I think it became. Obviously, of April, sorry. Yeah. So um, that is what they call them the King's Day. They celebrate openly and then you don't have to pay taxes. So taxes is, yeah. So it's, yeah. So this is the only day in the, in the. So in generous. The, so <laughs> generous, exactly. So I have to be, I have to be happy with that bullshit. But anyway, so the, the slave, the routes, the slave trade route was most of the time from West Africa which is nowadays Ghana. Uh, and then it goes to the colonies in the Caribbean, but especially, and then to South, to South America, which is then Suriname. And then the, what they were, what they were, uh, do, what they were um, uh, laboring for was specifically sugar plantation. They, were, they, were, they had sugar plantation there. So the, the, the Suriname story is a, funny, is a funny one because this attached the America immediately with, uh, with the Dutch is that um, for years, um, the Dutch tried to get gold from, from Suriname because they are in South America um, and in South America there's a lot of gold. Now they, they have found gold, but now the Suriname government themselves are stealing the people from that gold. And there are, of course, a lot of other uh, illegal practices going on there where people from Brazil and all over the places in their neighborhood comes to Suriname as well to get the gold from the ground. But in general, um, that was a little bit the, 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 the whole hope that Dutch had to get gold from Suriname. I think those days they couldn't get it. So they have switched Amster, uh, 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 New York for Suriname. What do you, what do you mean? So New York was, so before they got Suriname as their colony, um, they had uh, New York as, as territory. New as Amsterdam country. originally. It was called New Amsterdam, yeah. yes. That's why when you go to New York, you get things like Harlem. Harlem is a city in, in yeah. Holland. Harlem. So my ancestry yeah. what came when it was New Amsterdam, you know, exactly. just years before. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then uh, they were hoping to get gold and those kind of things. And of course, as well, because of the slave trade, they wanted you know, to do the sugar plantation there. They kind of like, uh, yeah, what is Raila, which is uh, the, this exchange. Yeah, they exchange New Amsterdam for Suriname. So Suriname was an exchange actually. And then the route became, became the, the triangle between, uh, you can say, uh, uh, West Africa, Curacao, and Suriname. Okay, so I, I nobody told me this. I had to just go and 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 um, research it for myself. 
and through a lot of you don't get all the information through school they don't tell you everything which i think is weird actually it was a when i was in holland a suriname guy was talking about it because their ancestors talk about the slaves the slave trade all the time so through their ancestry they tell their children and children tell their children the children tell their children and then one of these guys just talked to me and i said but i never heard this story before you know because we don't get these things at school and uh, and there's a there's a reason for that as well but because the the, the the caribbean colonies they are very mixed and i think the the part of my father is the white part the part of my mother is the so they they always like after the after abolition they never talk about it anymore they, nobody talks about it anymore kind of like it's like putting everything under the table nothing happened as do as though nothing happened and then you have all these mixed kids um some of them were were, were kids from um, raping the slaves and others are from legitimate uh, marriages uh, but uh, i'm a product of one of those um yeah one of those uh, mixtures so that's why i have i do have a, um, a lineage to europe and um yeah so that is basically in general to summarize it a little bit but in like around 18 centuries um it was the peak of the slave trade for the Dutch people, um, but they got they got a lot a lot of competition from other European powers. So uh, so in the late 18th, uh, you can say the economy was suffering, and then that is when my ancestry um, moved to to uh, the Caribbean as well. So you will see certain like my grandpa, my grand grand grandpa, I think is four, four generations, five generations up, moved to to Curacao from Germany to Curacao and then a part of uh, and then her uh, his sister establishes established herself in Amsterdam so I do have blood relations in Amsterdam as well so that is uh, also also uh, um, the, the the whole history of from my my end actually yeah yeah, that's so, so fascinating. And and yeah. it's interesting how hidden a lot of this history is. And yeah. and um what what is your uh thought about why these stories are hidden? Why aren't they taught? Yeah, I think personally, um shame. They they and the idea of every Dutch person and even the slaves they are ashamed um maybe because they don't understand or maybe because uh, they do all themselves have um four parents they were uh, dutch uh, slave owners you know and in in a certain degree you do love your four parents if, especially if you got to know them and they are nice people uh, you just you know you enjoy them for the way they are. You don't think about the bad things the four parents did, or your, your, you know. I think shame is the most. It that is it. I think we should be yeah. We should be not be ashamed of our past. I think we should talk about it. We should uh, make people conscious about it. That is the thing. We don't do that. We are so afraid, fear, of being. Um, attacked yeah. you know or rejected you know from from maybe from my my father's side is they will see that as an attack you know but right. from my mom's side you know it's 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 fear of you know we, we don't talk about it we just i don't understand why till this day is actually to be honest i'm still thinking why did they are they not talking about it? and for me the answer the only answer that i can think of is that yeah, you know, from, from from my perspective, in my understanding about trauma and the effects of trauma, and then how that's passed on, you know, unconsciously th yes. through, through generations, right, through yes. the genes, but epigenetically as well, as well yes. through the behaviors and through the environment um, that 
you know, when trauma creates dissociation, trauma yeah. creates a lot of compensatory uh, survival mechanisms yeah. to, to survive under hardship, you know, you adapt and aspects of your pain and trauma go underground, you know, they become unconscious, yeah. often expressed through the body in different ways through illnesses and things. But um, generally, there can be, you know, that shame that that an avoidance passed on to, you know, from parent to child, you know, we don't talk about that, you know, um, or something becomes very emotionally loaded and kids learn, you don't know, step uh, on that, you just you tiptoe around it. There's all sorts of um, legacies that that get passed on. And in, and in the United States, you know, this whole melting pot idea has led to a lot of people denying their ethnic origins in Europe, yeah. you know, and just say, I'm an American, that's all, you know, yeah. and it's this big cutoff, especially for, for white, you know, um, uh, Americans, especially men, you know, or people of German descent, you know, there's, there's yeah. shame around having German descent because of the whole, um, you yeah. know, Second World War thing, yeah. Right, right. And yeah. it's interesting in my family, like my my mom's uh, family has a very rich legacy, a very rich history. Yeah. And, but she never shared any of it with me. She didn't tell me we had a fort, you know, in our family name that her like yeah. great, great grandfather who was in the Revolutionary yeah. War, you know, like, like built and, and lived in and, and she didn't, tell there's so many stories that I've since discovered you know through the internet it's actually yeah. really interesting and by following names um yeah. and finding and then there's been some folks in my family who have done genetic testing and so, so forth to really confirm the lineage yeah. but you know it's interesting that it was not talked about and my yeah. mom she she lived in a on land and in a homestead that was passed down through multiple generations that now is just gone sold all the belongings gone antiques history and and it's it's sort of um shocking to me how that can happen you know one generation and now the land it's gone yeah um you know, and I look, so I'm curious, right? And I go back to the man who came over from Holland in like 1600s, mid middle 1600s. And he yeah. was um, fleeing for his life because he killed a man. And yeah. in my, when I first heard this, I'm, I'm in my little fantasy brain, hoping that it was self-defense and all this, right? Mm. Then I find more of the story and it's like, like hot headed, murder like reactive anger in a in a bar fight you know maybe he had a good reason for being mad but it, it didn't look like he had a good reason to pull out his yeah. knife you know yeah. and and then he had he was sentenced to death by sword is what the um the document said and that he and his wife and child you know yeah. came across on a ship and settled into what is now wall street and um was yeah. you know in new york and new york, yeah his the son new amsterdam. yeah new amsterdam and <laughs> and he became a shipbuilder and they and his oldest son the one that came with him ended up becoming like a pirate he was pirating okay. ships this going to madagascar so this is a very good um, uh, point that uh, i would love as well to discuss with you because if he was a shipbuilder i'm going to tell you the dutch and i don't know I don't know if this is known to, to, the, to the world or something like that, but the Dutch, uh, those days, they were one of the best shipbuilders ever. Until this day, one of the best, you know, boats come from Holland, the Netherlands. They were very skilled people. And this is where this whole idea and then pirating was also one of those things that they love to do. And, uh, and the, way, the way it happened is, is that, uh, of course, through the, the VOC that we are, I, talk, I started with and the WIC that we're talking, I mean, these things, they, they went through ships, okay? So what they did was they, they managed to use wind energy at the end um, to build these boats faster. That was actually their secret. And then, so if you go to Amsterdam, uh, you will see all these big, like old, moderate big, you can say not that big, that big, but 
you know, this this uh, wind wind um, mills. Okay, yeah, and then you will see that um, um, all over the place in Holland, especially in Amsterdam. But this is basically those windmills. They were created to to saw the wood, and then it will it will generate this energy for them to saw the wood faster, and therefore also build these boats faster. But and this is where maybe your father as well has learned it. Of your foreparents has learned his skills, his skill set of building boats because the Dutch they were very good at it, and. The whole European, all the European countries, they saw how fast they can build the boat. And then they saw, of course, money in it, because if they have the boat earlier, they can make the, um, the investment of buying spices, but also buying, um, you know, go for slaves, to the, doing trade across countries. They can do it faster. But... The Dutch, they understood one thing is that if I am the sole owner of the boat, and if I go, if I go on sea and you know for trade, I can lose all, all my money by losing the boat. The boat can sink in the bottom of the ocean. And all the spices and, and the things that I just got can go with the boat to the bottom of the ocean. So they understood that. So they started a what they call a um, a, a company. This is what the whole idea, the concept of a company comes from, is that you get some shares. So you can you can be shareholder of such a boat. This is where this whole limited uh, company comes from and, 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 and uh, um, uh, public companies, all these things. Because first it was a public, public company came into being. They call it in Holland NV. Which is a nam los of those cups. So it's kind of like a company without name, so without owner, so called, because the king has to be part of it, he can, but he cannot be associated with trading certain types of things, for instance, slaves. Yeah. So he cannot be kind of like the king and doing these practices uh, publicly. So it has to be done anonymously. So that is why you get a certificate, and that certificate. In Dutch, they call it Antonder, uh, uh, and you still have that 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 uh, in English you say over the counter. Yeah, so it's just a paper with no name on it, only a certificate saying that you are owner of ten percent of this boat. So when the boat comes on to, sh uh, to shore, you can go there. There will be a clerk, you can say, sitting down there. That is the same thing as in banks. You know, you have a clerk. And then you can go and bring your 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 certificate, and then you will get then the spoils of of the venture. You see, like a proportion, whatever. Yeah, proportion. Do you yeah. buy into it, and so you get exactly. the proportion that you buy into? Exactly. Wow. Yeah. yeah, interesting. So I, interesting. So that thing, and then this is where this whole shareholder thing comes from as well. So and where now Wall Street is very known of about this is something that uh, the Dutch were doing way before and uh, I think it just uh, with, uh, with the New Amsterdam establishing there as well I think obviously these influences um, just influence New York to be one of the you know uh, leading powers of the world even with this with this idea at least so um, yeah so you will see a lot of companies like Shell like uh, these are all Dutch companies actually uh, there was also The Voice. I don't know if you know the program The Voice, the John de Mol. All of them from 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 the Netherlands. Yeah. Didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of shows as well on on Netflix. You you will see this this production company. There are a lot of them also from Dutch. So uh, they are there, but they are in the shadows. They work in the shadows. They they say that Dutch people are the Dutch men and women are very well. They are relaxed. They are not so pompous. Pompous. I don't know if the word. I'm very, so they don't, they don't come out say yeah, I'm rich. Uh, they don't. They're not like that. They're always very simple. You will see them in a in a in a jeans like they are billionaires. They you will see them still in their jeans driving on bikes like when they are in Amsterdam. 
everybody you know are riding their bikes you will see these guys like it was funny because even the like they say yeah the dutch people are so relaxed that even the prime minister drives to work in a uh, on his bike yeah which They're is pra true practical people correct very practical yes yeah, yeah. but it's very right brain like sorry left brain left brain right yeah it's very left brain so mm -hmm. they everything has to kind of in a sense make sense or be logical and if it's not logical then there is no purpose talking about it even well and that extreme left brain is a setup in a sense to um objectify people or look at things through a solely economic lens perhaps yeah. and disconnect from the right brain you know more intuitive empathic yeah. sensitive and and i guess the question i you know i have when i think of this history is like how did people get so disconnected from the sense of caring and and being empathic for other people because this kind of um cutthroat trading yeah. um it involves dehumanizing people you know and so yeah. i think the history of of like slavery goes well before you know in yeah. the wars and uh thank you for bringing that up because actually indeed leslie the slavery is it is even more than that this is what i'm trying to tell everybody so the the colonies mm -hmm. as well as the uh, people in the netherlands as well is that slavery is not like we know this story of slavery this is the story of slavery and this is and i and i know a lot of uh, i i watch a lot of uh, news in america as well to understand that uh, because if you're in in the caribbean actually america is closer by than even the netherlands so you will get all these programs everything from america will be will be influencing the caribbean islands as well and that is uh, no exception for curacao so i was really i understand that a lot of i mean the the, the story of the slave slavery in america uh, the only focus is and this is also the only focus in europe right now as well it's like oh this these white people in in the early 16th century they enslaved us for 400 years you know um or even more and this is uh, um, this is bad blah 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 we need this we need that but actually it goes even before that it goes it goes actually it goes even like if you and and it is the reason why, because this is what the, the point is, yeah? why are, we, are, are they can be so cold hearted, like they so, um, they're having no care at all, like only, only being so extreme life brain. Well, it has to do with their language as well. If you, if you speak Dutch, even, even saying things like, I love you will sound very harsh. Like uh, if you say somebody I love you, you say "kalvanje," which is not sexy or it just not even sound uh, loving at all. Let uh, me make a quick personal point on this: is that my yeah. mother, who comes from this Dutch lineage, never—I don't—I—I I, I close to never said "I love you." Yeah, I never yeah. heard that. No. There wasn't affection. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of warmth. Exactly. And that I is wonder. Precisely yeah no that is dutch this is really dutch actually <laughs> they are not uh they don't show too much their emotions they doesn't mean that they don't love though i will be honest with you because uh, most of the time they do care you will see them caring but they will do it differently they will do it from another another, another way but they you will never like very little you will hear them expressing it in a certain way they will just do some certain things that is nice like you know you know they can invite you to come and they can do certain things for you um and i knew my mom loved me you know there were di yeah. different ways that she expressed different ways, yeah. consistency and, you know in other kinds of ways but yeah yeah you understand what i mean so it's a it's a it's a very different culture uh it's a very but i think that it is in the language because um they are an engineering uh, culture and this is the same as Germany as well. They are an engineering culture. Um, they have to be very specific and very harsh you know, to get things done. And uh, the language reflects that. 
the German, ger the Germanic language reflects that in general. And I think that has to do with, um, again, with um, our, our um, prehistory. So the history of human, human race. I think um, Babylon, uh, which is the, the Tower of Babylon, which is that found its way into the, into the Bible, which actually is in the Sumerian tablets way before the Bible. Um, has something to do with it because before um, the Sumerian tablets were talking about human race speaking one language and then, then they divided those language and then that language became uh, there are, I think that, that the, the, the division of the language is based on also the purpose of the group so that um, I, and, and by the way this is speculations that this is based on my research and I I read certain things and then I came to that conclusion, but I think everybody should, in any case, do their own due diligence. Uh, but if you, if, you're, if you just read that, that, that uh, the Sumerian tablets and you just go over the, the, the history of Enlil and Enki and those kinds of things, you will understand, you will, you will get certain ideas of what they were doing there. And um, one of the things that I speculate is that they were, they were the, the sections of because they were like if you if you read the the, the book of Enoch actually it all, it all talks about the same beings by the way and uh, they call them their angels and those kind of things but there are the Anaks they, they in the in the Bible they call them the Anaks and um, uh, there were thirteen in general thirteen kind of like leaders you can say uh, and uh, they all were. They all, uh, you know, went and lived in a certain areas of the world, and then they were speaking different languages. But they have similar things. Like that's why you have that every time, everywhere, the pyramids and all these things. But they will, they will have similar things, of course. But in general, the language will be different. The way of the, the culture will be different. What we call today culture will be diff will be different, and then that will also be one of the signs that I suspect. Um, you know, oh, this one is from this tribe it, it, that belongs to that leader, you know? So they did things to distinguish themselves so much and then um, divide and conquer. That is the whole purpose, the division and conquering. And then the language of those who needed to build um, like uh, buildings and build, uh, that, that language will be specific to those type of slaves. And then you have, the language for uh, the other types of, uh, like in my in in my country, for instance, the language is way different. But if you if you um, it's an emotional language. It's like Spanish, you can say even. It's like this 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 this. It is a it's a love language, you can yes, say. Yes, very. You know, there's an emotion in, in, in into yeah. it. Yeah, it yeah. is interweaving into it, like. Mm -hmm. So I think the language is a very effective tool to create certain type of culture. And, uh, and yeah, so I think that has a lot to do with it. And that came from our prehistory of the human race even. And it has found its way to this day. And then that's also, your, you, did you see, you see very well that uh, the type of things that, uh, depending on the language though you have to just pay attention like what are the the spanish people building what are they producing right and what are the dutch and the germans and those people producing you right. will see the difference you know so the more like the germans are building planes and building cars i don't know if spanish people i never heard of a spanish people the spanish country even building cars and building planes growing wine you know, growing, exactly. grapes, and growing grapes and, and, and creating food and those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. So they are, they, it's a more, it's a more loving thing. It's nurturing language. You have the nurturing language and you have like a more uh, practical one that, that, you know, you build stuff with it. So fascinating. Yeah. yeah that intuitively fascinating. makes sense to me. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So I think this is uh, this is the reason why as well the the whole the whole caring is shut down. Yeah, there is no yeah. care. There is no care whatsoever. Like, there is care, but it's a very false care, I call it, or a negative care, you can say. 
because they will talk about in terms of politi politi pol politics, they will talk about, yeah, we have to care for each other, meaning I have to steal from this group of people. So I, we have money so we can care for a certain type of group of there, you know? Right, right. But, uh, yeah. That's not true care. Yes, and it's based on a hierarchical system of power and authority. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. there being an authority that deems itself more worthy. Um, yes. Right. Yes. So this, I mean, the whole system of government, you know, is ultimately at the root of all evil slavery, perhaps. Right. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, government uh, uh, is slavery. Um, money, uh, monetary systems, is slavery. Uh, religion is slavery. I mean, all of these. Things are slavery, slave systems. It, uh, it is there to make sure the agenda of the slave owners is being executed. Right, yeah. and exploiting the survival needs of, of the generally mm -hmm. ignorant population. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. versus that so, are just there to survive and, and aren't um, inherently evil or, you know, even thinking that way. Yeah. You know, for the most part. Yeah. So this is actually the, the, the horror that we have right now, because now most of the people, they think that, oh, well, slavery is abolished. Uh, honestly, slavery was abolished in Holland in, uh, in the 1814, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And, but that is because of the pressure they got from, um, yeah, Actually, it it wasn't something that they 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 uh, it is officially abolished from, but they had international pressure actually, yeah. uh, um, especially from the, I think it was the Treaty of Vienna. There was a treaty to abolish the slave slavery, and then that put them into a position that they needed to do, to actually do that. But at the end, it was abolished around. 1863 that you really can say okay there is no and there is where like my grandpa my mom's side you will see that they will start like in in the islands they start selling um last names because the slaves they had no last name they they bear the last name of their owners so up to my grandpa so from that moment of abolishing of slavery until like my grandpa like literally my grandpa like like the father of my mom I'm not talking. I'm not talking about far, far away. That that man just decided to sell to buy because uh, up to that moment, you just you could still buy your, a, a last name because of the slave mo the slavery uh, environment, the slavery conditions that we had. These people didn't have their own their own names, and then they now now you can have your own name, but because you don't know the name of your foreparents anyway, because it was like 400 years ago. They don't keep a log of that. They just keep a log of uh, numbers. So the slaves were numbers. So they got names, they, the last name of the owner. So, um, yeah, so up to Sim like my grandpa. Yeah, they, that's incredible. Yeah, they bought a name. I think the same thing were happening as well in, 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 in America because when I hear names, like last names, like Freeman, those kind of things, I say, oh, I think that something similar was happening there as well. Yeah, I think that when, and also names were changed, they were simplified, they were misspelled, you know, when they yes. came into the United States through, exactly. you know, the um, Ellis Island and so forth, um, yeah. people lost some of their original name and the pronunciations. Exactly. And I think too, like going back in, in history in, in Northern Europe, that, that n surnames were still, created relatively recently in the history of humans yeah you know by and probably based on uh, it was a napoleon uh, Nap from napoleon's yeah napoleon kind of like brought that idea of uh, of uh, uh, well the way i understand because if you go to south america the, the thing of a last name is quite different it works differently as well but uh, I think it was Napoleon who, who kind of like say, okay, you know what? We will have, every family will have one last name. And then that, that will come from the father. Uh, but if you look at the South American kind of uh, system, they um, like every kid will have their mom and their father's yes. last name. Yes. So 
it, it uh, yeah. So. And then names were sometimes like based on your trade. So if you're yes. you know, a miller, you're a mill yes. worker, you're, yes. you know, a cobbler or whatever it is, you know, a smith. So yes. it doesn't even mean you're related. It could mean that you're coming from a certain region. Really? Yeah. You know, you're from like I think Van Vent. I don't even know the the correct Dutch pronunciation, but Van Tool or Van Tile is how my yeah. family name was spoken. That's like from a a, a town. Town, oh, yeah. P U I L or something. Tell. yeah. Maybe it's Tel. Uh, uh, Van Tel, yeah. Like my name as well as well. It's Tram, uh, but in Germany they say Von Tram, so Von from the town Tram. Mm -hmm. uh, Tram actually is a, it's a town in Germany still. Mm -hmm. And you can find it in North Germany somewhere. And uh, Glückstadt, Glückstadt that's called, I think. Mm -hmm. And then you, you will have, um, yeah, that, that's the, 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 the name of a town. So if you mm -hmm. say von Tram, which is von in Dutch is von, in Germany is von, they just changed the O with an A in Dutch. Yeah. and but it's the same thing it means from yes yes it means from. So right it's a germanic it's a germanic language it means the same yeah. thing it means from and uh, yeah so that they 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 would they would give you a name based on where you, where to town you're from or your profession what mm -hmm. you do okay so these are all these things are very um common those days to and then you 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 will have and now you will have like your grandkids, grand, 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 grandkids. They don't even know where these things come from. They don't even understand because they are they were born in a system already, and this is the problem. Like the the real root of the problem is that we are born in a system and we think this is the system is it. Right, right. But the system has been it you know like gradually engineered um, over yeah. time, and and become like tighter. I think the walls of it are more intricately yeah. binding us. Yeah. Uh, in ways that are different than well. than what yeah. people would normally think of when you use the word slavery, right? Yeah. And I, and it's so dramatic what happened with the Atlantic slave trade, the amount of torture and um, just clear inhumanity that in comparison to that, the slavery of the average person is so much um relatively freer and uh, yeah. higher quality of life that I think that's one of the barriers to people recognizing that they are in this um, systemic slave system. Yeah. So the, 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 the problem is because actually slave, slave was like before this, all of this, slavery was there already. Um, a lot of, um, a lot of my peers, like a, a lot of other uh people who talk about because there is a lot of movement in holland as well about this slave thing so uh, i'm the only one who, who address it a little bit different uh than the majority because all of them kind of like seek the government as a way of uh of helping them getting uh certain things on the agenda and my approach is more a conscious approach like become conscious first from where you come from what is really slavery because slavery is not what happened to us in those times slavery is way more than that like this is only a part of slavery like a very small part of it as well honestly and uh, because if i say to people like uh, because i have friends from africa and uh, well i was talking to an african person like what was uh, like 10 years ago or something and um he was he was from kenya Okay, and I was I had one of Kenya, one of Nigeria, and actually also one of Ghana. And actually, there was there was one one tribe in Ghana, and specifically the Ghana one is interesting because that linked directly to the slave trade as well with uh, with the west west uh, coast of uh, of Ghana. There was there was a very big tribe there. I'm not going to mention the name because I I'm afraid of getting it wrong because <laughs> sometimes the names are very very uh, uh, strange for me in any case, but uh, there was a there was a, a very big tribe there, and then that tribe kind of like was the leader of all the other tribes. And when that tribe goes to another like smaller tribe, they come here to collect. They come here to collect. You can say tax, 
this is like the early forms of taxes. And then if they cannot pay the tax, the families give their cups, their kids to the chief of the tribe, of the, the, the bigger tribe. And then they can took that and then the, the, the kid need, will be doing chores, will be cleaning and you know, doing household, household things for the bigger tribe. Okay, so when these Portuguese and all these European, you know, they reached um, uh, Africa, they saw that, uh, first of all, the tribe saw that, for instance, the Dutch had very crappy uh, uh, guns though, but they were guns. And then they wanted those guns as well, kind of like a part of their own kind of army things and so. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, they couldn't pay. They were paying a different spices of different things, but they, they, but one moment they, the, the Europeans saw as well that they were giving um, the, 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 the lower tribes were giving the bigger tribes uh, their kids, and then they started to trade like these, these things for you know, guns and all the other stuff that they would need, and then they would ask them for, for. Uh, for uh, for these uh, for the kid for the kids as well like for for, for a form of payment. But what they did not expect, because normally you have this smaller tribe will go live to the bigger tribe and then you are a slave, but you will have your own room. They will you will be treated as a kind of like a human being to a certain extent, of course, because it's still slavery. What they didn't expect is the brutality of the of not only the Dutch traders, but also the European traders in general, that uh, they, the, the, the kids were being raped, they were being thrown off of board of the ships into the sea, killed, and um, you know they were very dehumanized um, in a sense. So the, I think that is what the majority of people focusing on. And then that, because of they are doing that, they are, focused, they are, they are losing the focus on what is happening right now. Because yes, that happened. I understand that. That's cruelty to its maximum potential. I understand that still. But till this day, children are being abused as well. In Rome, for instance, what are you doing about it right now? You know? You're, you're muted. Uh. Thought I clicked it. Um, yeah. You know, it's it really, uh, one of my questions is when, you know, you're looking at history is how were the children treated? How were the mothers valued and the children valued? And when, you know, I look at the history, it's the children aren't even referenced half, you know, most of the time, you know, when you look at history, they talk about war and it's all the strategies of the generals and the this, it's very yeah. romanticized, yeah. you know, but when you study the history, you see how brutal uh, people were to each other and, how how much violence children witnessed how children were torn away from their parents yeah. you know m mothers and yeah and, and like war look at wars right now you yeah. have like uh yeah these things still happen i mean uh, i don't understand why people still think that we are living in a free country or a free economy or free whatever they think what's free yeah, it's nothing free is free yeah I mean, no it's a, it is a condition of slavery and it is worse than before because now it's masqueraded as freedom and then make you believe it's freedom and then you just give your consent for, uh, for it uh, all the way. Yeah. And children are still not valued in the way exactly. you know, that they, they should be. And they're still separated from their parents. Now it's exactly. called school and yeah. daycare. Yeah. I homeschool my kids. I have my kids. I don't have, I know it can be, everybody can say whatever they want. Uh, I'm homeschooling my kids. I don't want them to be um, conditioned in any capacity um, with this, with this, with the system. They don't have to. I mean, like, uh, I, I don't want to put them in that in that predicament, like making them workers. I want yeah. them to be thinkers. Yeah, and and from the psychological standpoint, even Gabor Mate, you know, a very uh, kind of respected um, psychiatrist nowadays, he's he's talking directly about how we are standard practices of removing children from their parents like in infancy and, and young childhood and putting them in daycares and sending them to school and separating the mother and the mother and child or the parents and child is 
disrupting the security of their emotional attachment, which is yeah. the foundation of mental health, yeah. is, is created mm -hmm. through the relationship of that mo very dependent infant and yeah. create that bond with the parent yeah. who is then very attuned to the needs of that child and creating the security in relationship that then is the foundation. You know, the first five years really exactly. are the foundation exactly. of the future. It is so beautiful. You're, you're just nailing it. Because let's put it this way. How does that translate later on in, in a human, in the life of that person? You will see that the, this is how you get for instance, the fight between men and women as well, because they were accustomed to have to be married or to have this father figure or mother figure to be the government or the church, other than their own their own parents, it's because they don't they, they don't associate their parents of being even their parents like Dutch in Holland. Let's put it this way: in Holland, if you are, if I'm not mistaken, 18 years of age, uh, actually at 18 years of age already they the parents are going to start asking you when you're going to get out of the house, if not before that. Some people go even before that, they go out of the house. I mean, like a teenager, I, I personally think 21 years of age is the age of maturity, is the age of consciousness, I call it, seven times three. Oh, interesting. And I'll, and the neurology or the study of the, and the study of the brain is showing the brain doesn't even fully mature to like 25. Yeah. you can it's imagine that. Yes. Yeah. and we're yeah. sending young people mostly men young men into the military mm -hmm. into yeah. war and, don't even think. and and traumatizing yeah. and disrupting their brains and yeah and, they, and they're gonna even think they they, they have like a, a think of a child a brain of a child still they don't have, they don't know morality they don't know the difference between right and wrong behavior so we'll have this, this is, and this should be cultivated by the parent in the beginning of the, from the beginning, from the birth of that child until the child reaches a certain type of maturity. For me, 21 years of age is a very good ballpark, uh, but it needs to be instilled into the kids' morality and, and period. There is nothing else, like the foundation is that. Everything else is, is, is secondary, actually. This is this is the this is I'm very yeah very strict about that uh, in that regard because I think there is nothing else to be done right now than to keep to get this generation to be moral and uh, there is slavery in everything everything yeah. and it is that is then what I was talking about in the beginning of the show as well it's like okay so you have this 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 and I'm speaking specifically for the Dutch I don't know every I don't know all the stories from America. But uh, from the Dutch perspective, you will have like this, the, the, the Dutch, they, they, uh, they know that there is colonies out there. They're, they know that, oh, these colonies are so-called independent, but they, understand that, but they understand as well that this is not, this is a different, the different form of slavery. And, and they understand even that um, in their own country, in the, in the Netherlands, the things that are happening there is also a part of slavery, but they are so afraid. They're talking about continuing about safety and about uh, all these things that are imaginary to the mind, you can say, nothing, nothing specific, concrete, or they can put some beautiful graphs on the, on the screens and everybody will believe it. So it's, it's, it's crazy. And then they still contribute to this slave system in any form in any form, in any in all capacity, actually, they in the in the government. Like when I was uh, going to school there, because my my parents, uh, especially my father, he sent sent me to school in Holland in uh, with my 18 years of age. I was I, I wasn't doing anything in Curaçao anyway. I was just chilling. <laughs> so he said, okay, you know what? You go to Holland and uh, you go and do something with your life. So I went I went to Holland. And uh, uh, normally, like uh, as a as a young teenager, your mind is not in politics. And my mind wasn't in politics. I was uh, really talking about way different things, and maybe even women or whatever, you know, partying and do you know crazy stuff. Uh, everything except except 
politics. You know, you go to Bali, Holland. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You go to Holland and you your your coast your other students, you don't you will not have friends if you cannot talk a little bit about politics because they talk continually about politics. They are so in it's so ingrained in their system, their mind is so busy with it that for them that is the way to bring change into the country. Okay. That is the way that they pause just one moment. I'm sorry. No, no problem. No problem. So sorry about that. Keep going. No, no, it's not, it's not a problem. So that what I was saying is that their mind is so is so um actually corrupted with that bullshit that uh, they cannot even they, like they, they don't have any type of reference outside of that it's 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 sometimes very difficult for them to even understand freedom they don't they don't understand like if i talk about anarchy they would say but it's not possible how, how do you instill rules to people so why would you want to instill rules why do you want to force people to do anything because you think it's the best way to do it, that's why it should be there. So they, they don't have that that the capacity because they are so. And you know you know what the other other funny part is because I'm talking about the white side of the family. I'm talking about the black side of the family. I go to to the colonies and say, yeah, you guys have to be free, man. But 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 they will say, but we won't have a passport. I'm like, dude, really? Is that the reason why you want to say slave? Like because you want the Dutch passport, is that the only reason? They don't regard freedom as. I think personally, freedom should be regarded as the highest in everybody's lives. Yeah. Truth and freedom, I think. Truth and freedom, because that is what we need to develop our highest self. Yes. And if you don't have that, you will not. You will not. There is that. You. You will be stuck. In right. this karmic wheel, what they call this karmic wheel, this yeah. reincarnation cycle. The whole purpose, the purpose is not to reincarnate. The purpose is to escape reincarnation. Mm -hmm. This is what people also don't understand that. Yeah. But, and then the feminine principle of care and that, which I think, you know, ultimately, when we are clear of all this programming that comes from trauma and um, the the environmental attacks really that we're under daily that I they they confuse they block and and create um disruption and confusion within our own yeah. sensory system like we are not even able to uh use our kind of physiological technology in such a way that we are in touch with what is true like we've lost our ability to even properly use our That's senses true. you know because yeah. trauma and then you think about it as this multi-generational effects of trauma that we're carrying in us that we're probably in utero and and popping out of our mother's womb with already certain programs trauma. yes and yes. trauma and yeah. then having it reinforced that we uh, are out of touch with our real pure ability to oh. discern almost yeah. that is that is the lover's card the discernment the lover's card yeah that is the entire i'm going to be, i'm going to be starting uh, uh next uh, not not next month in september i'm going to be starting with my new season it's going to be the um we're going to discuss the tarot cards and the tarot cards is a, a systematic hermetic system, actually, um, of developing uh, the inner self. It also, of course, uh, will, by developing the inner self, that reflects in the society as well. So it, it deals with the macrocosmic uh, aspect of the self and the macrocosmic aspect of the self. So, uh, but this is called the 11 step, the 11 steps of the serpent as well, which is uh, actually what the ancients called as well the rising of the kundalini for instance yeah you have to become a divine self right All so my, the, yeah. the lover card being the divine masculine Design. feminine is one of the in... qualities you have to you have to develop yeah yeah so makes sense. Every, yes so every step on the on the top of the card 
is a state of consciousness that you have developed, actually a quality that you have to develop in yourself to become this higher self. So discernment of good and uh, right, the, of right and wrong is one of these qualities. And, and if you cannot do that, then you are in big trouble. Yes, you're gonna be like the beast. Um, that ba the balanced brain, right? The right and left hemispheres, the yes. feminine and masculine, and yeah. and that is a, a, a healthy consciousness, you know, which allows us to receive all information, right, yes. in a balanced way to yeah, then, yeah. you know, be a whole human. And exactly. I think that through this this history, this legacy of of slavery and trauma, that balance has been disrupted, yeah. and and our systems are, are 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 being damaged in some su such a way. So here we are, you know. Let maybe sh let's shift a little to talk about um, how do we reconcile this? How do we, you know, once recognizing, you know, taking off the veil of ignorance being willing to look at the truth of all of our lineage, recognizing yeah. that slavery has been in existence really probably from the beginning of humanity. Humanity, yes. Yeah, yes. And, and you know, there's so many examples of every color enslaving their other own color, color other yeah. color, it doesn't matter, you know, really, yeah. it's been a human behavior for so long. For quite some while, yeah. And that there are real consequences on all of us today. Yeah. And it's not about blaming a race or a color or a particular people. It's, it's, yeah. it, this is about recognizing our, hu our humanness and then doing the healing work, which does start with, within each individual. Yeah. And addressing the shame, you know, that, you know, we talked about earlier, that is, and really opening up to maybe exploring, I think there's value in, in exploring your family history, and studying history in general, right, yeah. and seeing how your own family lineage uh, has been a part of that journey yeah. exactly. in a larger yeah. history, yeah. seeing how each of us has the victim and the abuser all of us in one way or another yes within us yes and the only the the solution isn't by looking externally to a government to enforce a policy or create a holiday or whatever it is it's that is is like a big distraction and and very frustrating for me to see but it's yeah. it's coming inward i'd like you yeah. to share your thoughts on that yeah yeah i i you know, I'm pretty much in line with what you're saying in in, the, in, in different aspects. I do think that we all are both. We are the ones that execute slavery and we are also the victim of slavery. Because if you have, been, you have if you are a dark skinned person and you have been voting, then that is a part of slavery that you are supporting. Yeah. So, how is that different than than what happened to to your foreparents uh, years ago? Because there are certain type of race. Race, like the difference in race, is uh, genetically like we are different. You and me are maybe different, zero point two percent, genetically different. That is just because I have a little bit more melanin than you. I mean, like there is not even. I, I wouldn't even say that there are white people and black people because black and white are very different colors. Like this is a kind of like a brownish color and there are different type of shades. And then the less melanin you have, the, the less the less brownish you look, okay? That's like the polarity yeah. principle, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we are essentially as well brothers and sisters. So we will be, we were as a human race, we were enslaving each other all different ways and now we're still doing it i mean there are let's put it this way there are people still in africa suffering yes i don't see anybody uh, very little people like of color who consider them your 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 uh you call it uh, your brothers and sister there in africa i won't see i don't see you bother i see you sleeping very comfortably there in in, in Europe or in, in America, it doesn't matter where you are, except in Africa, yeah? So 
I'm like, uh, it, it's, it's about the human race. For me, it's a, it's a matter of the human race losing their path towards divinity. So if for me, it, it, like all these other things are distractions. I mean, like you have this guy as well. I don't know. Um, there are different types of guys that are coming, coming online with different types of theories and um, you know, Terrence Howard and those kind of people. For me, for me, it's I, I've talked about this in my book as well. Like way before Terrence Howard came forth and say, you know what, this is this is how I think about math or whatever. I talk about the act, the aspect of having all these technologies. Doesn't matter what type of technology it is, without being moral. So it is going to be giving a kid a gun. To, the one of, there will be a moment that he will shoot himself and kill himself. Okay, so this is the problem. We don't, we have to start at the beginning. Uh, and the beginning where, where we start is slavery. That is where we start. We start like this is a very uncomfortable subject for many people. And that's why I was very happy that you, that you have invited me to, to discuss it because I think it's important for people to understand that it's not about color. It's about um, this, this uh, master and servant mentality this is it that is it's a it's a it's a, it's a satanism is not um it is a mentality it is the way we think and then eventually you act of course according to those thoughts so this is it the slavery is like yes color color distinction is a is a part of it was a part of it maybe today is not that prominent i still we still have that idea the separation in colors i mean even even in uh, in uh, the colonies itself and this, this this is this is a strange thing to say you, you understand that even in the colonies itself so when you have like you go to curacao for instance or you go in any other colony of any european country okay the light-skinned ones always mm -hmm. take a master uh, kind of uh, 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 behavior towards the do the darker skinned ones, which is yeah. which which is weird, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like, in Mexico too, and and probably yeah. other countries. Yeah. Yes. So this is crazy because it's a it's not a white or black. It's a humanity thing. We don't understand what slavery is. We have been conditioned and programmed that slavery was that which happened like four hundred years ago, five hundred years ago to the blacks and Africans, or maybe even to the Jews. This is our understanding of slavery, and it, it doesn't go further than that. But that is not slavery. Slavery is literally the removal of one's choice in any aspect possible. It's like, it doesn't matter in which case, you, if somebody tells you you do not have the choice to choose, that what I say, or I gave you like two choices, and then I would say, no, I don't want to choose from those two choices. I want my own choice. If that person don't give you that, that choice of, and then especially if you are being a moral person, that in, ess in essence is slavery. You are just denying someone from its freedom to choose, from its freedom to determine for himself or for herself the path of her life. Right? And especially when that person doesn't harm any other human being. That's, that's why we have to teach other, each other how to not harm other human beings, which is very easy, don't steal. In any capacity, then you don't harm another. Okay, Don't steal property, don't, speak, don't steal the virtue of somebody, don't steal, don't steal. That's it. Don't yeah. take their and, property. And humans can't consider. be your property. Exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. Other humans are not your property. It's not your property. And if, as long as you don't, if you understand that, then um, you're going to be okay. And then you can make any type of decision that you want in freedom and an anarchic state will, be, will not be in, 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 uh, in fantasy. Anarchy will, is not a fantasy. I like, the, the all, like all governmental systems, they all fear anarchy. That's the only thing that they feel. Like the rest is, uh, they don't even mind. They can go into debates, and then they because they know that if communism wins over democracy, it's be it's okay. I mean, if monarchy wins over uh, democracy, it's okay. If democracy wins over um, um, uh, communism or socialism, 
it's okay, or Republican or whatever form of government it is, because it's it all types of government is built on servants and masters. Yes. That's that's the that's the pattern. Okay. And then in any type of relationship between between your 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 other human beings, if you see that, if you see that pattern, that is the distinction that you have to cultivate, that quality of a person to see through and see, hey, this is this is slavery. I don't want to be part of it. Okay. And that is what all of us should be doing, actually. Yes. So uh, it is just abolish all these things. It doesn't matter the color, it doesn't matter anything. I love I love Dutch people as as much as I love non-Dutch people. I love all human race, actually. I, I have been traveling to South America. I have been a few a few weeks in America as well. Europe is the way I travel a lot here. So I, I, I have a certain type of love for, for uh, um, my own people, but I have love for the Dutch people as well because I, I have, I'm both. I'm not the one, neither the other, which yeah. I don't mind either, to be honest, because it's kind of like, oh, maybe I'm balanced. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's the healing work of, of, of being yeah. coming to love oneself, including those areas where we hold shame. You know, I think yeah. that's the internal work, right? Yeah. So that we cannot be in that self-loathing because if we're not, you know, the people who are able to somehow justify, you know, torturing or enslaving another human, they're not really in true self-love. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I would even say that if you don't, if you, and, and, I would say prove me wrong uh, like for the people who don't agree with me like uh, if you don't love yourself right if you don't care for others you don't love yourself you don't i mean like if you if your only concern is your family for instance uh, i'm not saying that you shouldn't be caring for your family because family is one of the most one of one of the important uh love like where your love should go towards let's put it that way yeah but if that is only your concern and the rest, you can say, ah, fuck the rest, for instance, uh, I would say you don't love yourself either. Yeah. It's because, been, you yeah don't, the, go ahead. because you don't understand uh, the relationship between yourself and the other person there. Right. Okay. Because you are the other person. You yes. are your, your, your brother's keeper. We need to take, uh, take care of each other. We need to have that social, that social, you can say, uh, um, uh, check. On each other you need to tell you need to be able to tell somebody you know you're doing this is wrong you or you are being um um like i i say that all the time people become angry at me like i was sometimes i was walking it was like i'll share with you a story i was walking in the in the city and there is a there is a festival that they that the dutch love to to to, to celebrate which is the, the they call it the center class uh, uh, festival and Santa Claus is akin to Santa Claus. Yeah, actually, Santa Claus from America. I, uh, uh, Coca Cola took the Santa Claus from Dutch, repackaged, repackaged it, and then create this this uh, Christmas. Um, but in the, in Holland, they don't celebrate it at the twenty fifth. They celebrate it at the fifth of December, just twenty days prior to when they celebrate Santa Claus. Uh, Christmas, when we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Christmas with a Christmas tree and all these things. But we don't celebrate Santa Claus. Only the Americans celebrate Santa, uh, uh, Santa Claus uh, with, the, with, the, with the midgets and those kind of things. Well, the Dutch version, the Dutch version is a white man with a beard with uh, black, they call it the Black Pete. So they are black servants. And yeah, and then the Surinams, they they got notice of this. So in Holland, there's a, every year, there is a lot of commo commotion, a lot of uh, uh, back and forth debate about this festival that should be abolished, yes or no, blah, blah, blah. But it is a way of programming the kids as well that uh, as a white person that you have supremacy over the black ones. And then the black peats, they're all, that are the ones that are like, either they are stupid because you see them doing stupid shit or they are, um, yeah, you can say, uh, doing bad things that center, that center class has to punish them because they don't, they don't want to listen 
you know. And then uh, after all these things, then Santa Claus give uh, gifts to the kids, you know. And I say, okay, you know what? If Dutch if the Dutch people don't want to to abolish this feast, then I would say let the colonies introduce another type of feast. For instance, with Hitler, because if you talk about Hitler in the Dutch sense, they will be very offended, like very offended because for them it was five years of hell from 1940 to 1945. It was five years of hell because they will be kept, they were captured by the, by the Germans. And for them that was slavery to, the, to its highest uh, degree. So I would say, okay, then, then introduce a feast, but then I would be a mean man, of course. They say introduce a feast where Hitler will be the center class in this case, you know, <laughs> giving gifts to the children, you know, and then make the play of how the Dutch, how the Dutch died in the Second World War. You know, would you love that? Yeah, it hits the home, it hits the point home. It hits the point, you know, but if you don't deliver it like that, they won't understand it because for them it's culture, it is uh, no, it's not culture, it's just slavery being being glorified. I think it's mindless religion in a way. Yeah. It's like the repetition of of a practice that is really that that is now so automatic. Yes. That people are disconnected from what it's actually telling you, what it's subconsciously planting exactly. in you. And I was telling somebody that I was saying, and then the funny thing, and this is the funny, this is like the, the most funny thing. Like you address the Dutch about that. They don't recognize it. And then you go to the colonies and address that to the colony because the colonies just took that festival and they just were celebrating it mm -hmm. as though it is normal for them. It's not, it's just a feast and it's for the kids and it is funny. So, and then one, one of, I was in the city and I addressed that to the guys, they became so angry at me. I am the one who telling you, you shouldn't be celebrating these things, programming your own kids to be kind of like slave of anybody. It's not about color even, because they wanted to change the colors as well. It's not about color, it's about the, the, the master servant yes. pattern. Yes. You see, and, and everything that has that, everything that has that, that structure, we should remove from our system. Right. So, this is the reason why, like, I, I, I still keep my kids, at, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I um, um, homeschool my kids. Yeah. Because, uh, like, I send them to school one time, and then they came back and said, what, what did you learn today? Yes, uh, center class and sort of feet. I'm like, dude, really? I mean, like, uh, didn't they teach you about any math or, or, you know, language, anything? I mean, like, no, I just uh, learned about that. And we have to just make some drawings. I'm like, no, dude, I'm just come home. <laughs> yeah, right. Now, is Protestantism very big there too? As yes, a, yes. Yeah. Well, Protestant was, uh, okay, so this whole, this whole um, um, Protest, pro, uh, Protest, um, um, uh, sorry, uh, Protestant, Protestant, like the, the royal family is a, pr a Protestant family. And that was because of Napoleon as well. He, he declared himself king uh, of actually uh, what they call a Kaiser. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's the ruler over um, uh, whole Europe. Um, but actually it, the whole thing was because uh, the Roman Empire there was very Catholic and, uh, and the, um, uh, the Pope was the one appointing kings because there is nothing higher than God of course and the Pope represents even the, the whole Christ on earth which is um, the highest authority uh, in the Catholic Catholicism of the, they represent God because the son is God himself so they represent God on earth so um, a king should be um, uh, appointed by the Pope which is the representative of God himself so well, Napoleon didn't like that so he decided to, to become a Protestant. Like, uh, I mean, the name says it all. It, it, they are protesting against the Catholics. <laughs> and then they have, of course, their own doctrines. And in Holland, the king is the, 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 the highest authority in the, in, the Protestant, in the Protestant church. 
So the king is the representative of the faith. He is also one of his titles, also the defender of the faith, which actually is defender of his own uh, cult, you can say. Uh, so that yeah, Protest Protestantism is uh, is uh, is very much active still in in the Netherlands, um, and uh, it is very important because. Um, uh, Holland was has been like uh, Napoleon gave the 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 Netherlands. It was called the Netherlands because it's the lowlands basically. They, they were lower than the than the sea levels. And then what you have is then what we call nowadays the Netherlands was one country with Belgi Belgium and I think as well with uh, Luxembourg, if I'm not mistaken. It is Belgium and Luxembourg. This was this was called the Netherlands, and maybe even a little bit of of France. This was called like the Netherlands, and uh, they are. And then after that, um, yeah, they split. Uh, they became. Uh, I mean, I think it was even before a republic. But I'm talking about even before, uh, like around the the 18th centuries, and then but the Netherlands that you see today. As the, the 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 and with Belgium and a little bit of France and Luxembourg, that was given by Napoleon. Napoleon gave that. Um, uh, I think Willem van Oranje, which is then the like the the hero of the royal family in Holland. Uh, they have ancestry as well with Napoleon, but I think as well with uh, with. The, the England, the royal family of England, actually all the royal family of Europe, they are related somewhere, somehow. And all the presidents of America are related to this royal family some way, somehow. I've, I've heard that, I've read that. Yes. Crazy. Yes. It's crazy. So this is how I think as well the, the whole, because I think America, it's the purpose of America is this idea of creating a, in general, I believe, and I, the way I look at the history of America, the forefathers, they meant it to be a free country in the sense of anarchy. And the corruption of government came uh, with these, these family members of the royal family. They needed to infiltrate uh, this new system in one way or the other. To, to because they, it doesn't matter if they don't have a king. The, what matters is the disbalance of power. Yes. So there will be a family that 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 rules over another another race of another another uh, uh, people. So the families rules over another people. That's the whole that's the whole idea. They don't have to be kings and, and queens. Yeah. There have to be this this disbalance of power. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So. You you talked about how important it is for you to raise your children um, in homeschool, you know, and protect them from the indoctrination and so forth. It's quite a challenge to raise kids, you know, um, consciously when we're in the soup of this um, yes. slavery system, right? I to, and, yes. I so, have to so just share a little bit about your your thoughts about how how to protect your kids, how to teach, and you know how do you approach raising your children? Well, I uh, what I try to do a lot is um, talk to them a lot and ask them questions. Uh, what do you think about this? Well, the first thing I I have conveyed to them. Well, okay. So my whole great work. Let's begin with the beginning. My whole my whole. Um, um, decision to start the great work was actually to leave because I have three more kids uh, from apart from this family that I have right now and the current family I have two kids from that I was divorced so I have three other kids and I was and of course be, the divorce come all this separation of, of, of father and mother and in Holland they even stimulate that so that means that the the, the woman can have all type of financial aids uh, uh, from the government. So they really want, uh, and then they destabilize the, the whole family uh, by doing that. Because now the woman is now married to the state because the state is taking care of, of the kids, it's taking care of the mother. And, uh, and then if they really make, want to make the man's life even a living hell, they're going to come to the father and then remove money from him 
for child support and all these, these things. I think in America, we have similar systems as well. But I don't think in America, they take care of the woman the way they do it here in Holland. So in Holland, you really get money for every kid, especially if your kid is not, uh, uh, is, if you're a single parent, you get more money from the government to send your kids to school, to make sure to pay for clothes, to go to school, because that is the, the whole point. You have to go to school and, uh, <laughs> and they, they pay for, so you get money every, for every kid, you get like three to 400 euros every, every quarter or something. So, um, and then on top of that, you get also other types of uh, what they call tuslaha, which are kind of like, uh, um, so, um, yeah, it's kind of like uh, money, extra money to pay for all types of other things like your house, like you get money to pay your rent, you get money for paying payment of uh, your um, health, health insurance, you get money for paying all these things. They give you, they give you kind of like uh, money uh, to do that, except they they remove a, a big portion of taxes from your salary, but then they give it back in forms of of uh, these social packages. So, um, what was I talking about? We were talking about the um, how I'm going to raise my kids. So yeah, so I was um, I just stood still and say, wow. I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not anymore with my, my three other kids. This is going to be a challenge because how I'm going to be educating them. And I hate the idea of leaving it over to the government I as well. So I started making podcasts in Dutch. And in the beginning, of course, you will hear me saying, oh, your father loves you so much and you have to do this, you do that. And then after that, like after four or, four or five podcasts, Later did I know that other people were listening to my podcast as well, obviously, because I, I wasn't expecting it, but I did expect it. But the reason why I wasn't expecting it because the, I just, I'm IT myself. I just registered a, um, a, uh, a, a website it's called The Great Work Experience. Actually, it wasn't even called The Great Work Experience. It was, it was called tram.org, like that. And I'm it was called podcast.tram.org. Yeah. And then... Um, I was uh, I was putting all my podcasts in there, and then so my kids can read, can hear my voice, and I was talking to them through these podcasts as well. That's what I was doing with those three that I did not have uh, um, like every day. So every week I was like kind of like putting a podcast out, and then I was like uh, getting emails and people were saying, "Yeah, but uh, can you speak about this?" And, well, this is, not, this is not for you. This is for my kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> so, but then, then after that, you see m my tone changed and the way I speak was more like towards an audience and more and less, a little bit less towards the kids. I still was addressing my kids, but I was also addressing an audience. And, um, and then uh, uh, through that device, I started to instill in them the uh, the occult knowledges uh, and my focus is obviously trying to teach them uh, what is moral what is a moral behavior so becoming moral and in the middle of all of that um, freedom freedom and truth as the basic as a foundation of everything you do in life so my whole thing is as well to teach them how to transform themselves into a a, um, um, a moral human being and not only that useful for the community so helping the community you know helping build the community to make a better community that we have right now so that is actually the way I'm doing it I'm still doing it like that and then I just dedicate a special book for them as a kind of like an inheritance from me which is called Anarchos which is actually anarchy and actually that book was also written for them, but then I got as well input. Now I'm, great, I'm doing the second edition of that. So I took that book and then I just summarized the, um, the basic points that I, wanted, I want them to know as a father to them. This is what I want you to understand. This is what you, so it's not a book that is for the advanced people. It is more a book that you can give your kids so you can understand 
number one, uh, freedom. Number two, what is an real anarchy? What does it mean? What is this creator? Mm. Who is this creator? If it, if it even exists? And uh, who are we in the middle of all of it? And how can we transform ourselves into becoming a better human being? So all my material is about transforming yourself into a better human being. I don't I don't, because I, I think that should be the first aspect. And then the universe will give us everything we want. It yeah. will give us everything we want. So all these technologies, these things will come very easier if we are moral human beings. So this is basically how I approach it. And then those, the two that I have with me, of course, those, they, they hear me every day. I ask them like, what makes you happy? You know, I'm really trying to get them to, to, to understand their state of mind. And then when when I see them see something on the television, because I don't separate them completely from the world either. I don't believe in that. I let them, I let them choose uh, most of the time the programs that they want to see. I just vet it and see if it is something that is not for grown ups, of course, because they are nine and 10 or something like that. So I don't want them to be looking at really weird, weird stuff. But in general, they choose the materials they want to learn. So I just, uh, I say to them, you can have chemistry, you can have, like, my kids already do chemistry and history and, and, uh, and math, and they do fractional uh, math and all these other stuff. They choose themselves. Physics, uh, cosmology, they, they have cosmology as well. I, mean, I just ask them, what do you want to learn? Yeah. And then they say, I want programming, Papa. I want this, I want that. And I say, okay, yeah. And then I will make sure to put the program for them, and then they can go and do it themselves. And then I want them to as well i don't tell them most of the time i try not to tell them what to do what i do is i i i let them be themselves and then i just ask questions i said to them for instance last time i was telling them like he said do you know that if you spent i just came up with this he eh? said do you know uh, if you spend ten thousand hours into one subject that after those 10,000 hours, you become a master of that, ten, of that subject. And then you say, really? You say, yes. Yeah. So let's put an example. If you want to be good at guitar, so because one of them, they play guitar, the other one play piano. That's also one of the things that they chose to do. But I don't want to force them to do it. So I don't want to be every day, hey, you have to play, hey, you have to play, you have to play. I don't want that. I want them to, because I don't want obedient kids. I want self-thinking kids. Yes, yeah. big difference. It's a big difference. So I just and so I do. I want them to come from them the desire of doing something that is worthy of doing, worth, worthy of your time. And so I said, yeah, ten thousand hours, then you will be very good, and then you will be considered a master of that particular subject. But you do have to do it. And then they say, okay, so that, but how does that translate? How can I reach that 10,000 hours? And they say, well, if you do two hours a day, it will take you, like, I think it was like 10 years or not, eight years or something like that. But if you take four hours, a, four hours a day, it will, you're going to be around six years. You're going to be a master. Now, if you are now 10 years, and then let's say you do four hours a day for your piano. Okay. That will make you a master in the piano at the age of 16. And I told one of them. And it says, uh, and wouldn't it be cool that you can play like this big orchestra as a 16 years of age? So it doesn't matter the age you start. You just need that 10,000 hours. Yeah. No, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> so it becomes yeah. very, very tangible for them. Very real. So, oh, I can spend. So then they know, oh, I can do it like four hours every day. Then they have to be consistent. Yeah, it's self-empowering and it, self -empowering. it's putting the power within themselves and their choice, right, exactly. to, to unfold their own self, right, exactly. in the direction they feel called. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And then I, I like sleeping as well. Like they are allowed to sleep like actually whenever they want. The only thing is like, okay, after 12 o'clock, I think it's a bit too, too, he said, you have to go to your bed and then you can, until you fall asleep then, but then they wake up and then they have, they do have a program, but it is a program that like, okay, so you have to do certain things because you're part of the family, you have to do certain things. And, and then your, your, your learning curve, like, like the, the, the learning hours, you decide what you're going to do in those hours. I'm not going to be telling you that. I'm going to be monitoring your progress. That's all. 
as a father, I just monitor your progress and see how far you come and I'm try to push you into the right direction and, and I talk to them a lot. What do you think? Do you feel safe uh, uh, with us? Um, what are your best memories that you had with us? Uh, can we in any, in any moment make it better for you to learn in any capacity? Do you really wish something? Did you have talk to strangers? Did you need things you know that uh, you don't um, uh, you you are afraid to to ask us? You know, so you know that's so um, beautiful what you're describing that I think is missing in you yeah. know the most of the parenting relationship you know child parent child relationships that I know because yeah. you know it's you're really treating them as the their own um as that how important they are yes right that their opinions that their that their desires that their motivations are important and that you're not there just sort of imposing the plan onto them no. but really being there like steward to become who they are you know and, and you know leslie this is so hard sometimes sometimes people think that it is very easy, but it is so hard because you, I myself has been, I've been programmed. And um, my parents impose a certain uh, uh, things that needs to be done. You need to do it like this, you need to do it like this, you need to go to this school, to that school, you need to finish that, you need to do that, you know? And, and it is sometimes difficult because sometimes you pick up these old habits and then you want to, you know, do yeah. it with your kids as well. So this is the this is the the most that is this is the great work. Yes, great, being aware of yourself and your own exactly, programming, as so a that parent. you're not putting it on your children. Exactly, and seeing the same patterns. Exactly. Yeah. And that and that is what I call the great the great work experience because it it is my experience, and how I experience it and how what I'm doing to fix that and it's out to the public in the Dutch in the Dutch uh, community. Uh, it is in Dutch though. But it is out there. I I did have I do have some things that I translate in English, especially the the, the articles and the uh, the book is translated in English. Oh, good! I was going to ask you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I'm not right now with the second edition of the book because I have uh, had uh, different uh, um, feedback from it as well. There are some grammar mistakes in there. There are some things that I have to change. Mark even um, forwarded it, by the way. That is nice. That's yeah, a nice addition awesome. to it. So, so I'm going to be putting that in there, and uh, uh, I'm going to be, well, I think I'm going to be like within, I think, in 2019. So it's five years after I'm almost. Um, I have gained considerably more knowledge in certain areas, so I'm going to be putting it all in the book as well. I'm trying to keep the book thin because it's. I know that kids don't like to read, so I take care of that as well so the original version was 100 pages that's not a lot like right. it is a it's a very small read you're easy done read. it's a very easy i might uh, so the easy it's easy to read as well so uh but i was trying to juggle between it has to stay short i have to write elegant because i want i i love to do the great work with a certain type of flair but I want to the if the the ideas and the knowledge to be conveyed to my kids as well at the same time, and I want it to be a legacy for them. So it's kind of like a something that they can say, yes, this is a beautiful, beautiful subject that my parents left me. Now I would say not everybody can want to to write a book. It doesn't have to, because the whole idea was first to write a treatise, uh, like a kind of like a summary of the knowledge that I have gained and summarize it and leave it to my kids privately, All right? And then because, because of the great work that I started to do online it was first for them and then I got some feedback and blah, blah, blah. I decided to put the book as well online. I'm glad, <laughs> that's how, yeah. That's how I started. That's how I started. And then uh, uh, there's then a, a lady and I have Maida West as well on this platform, a lady from, uh, from Holland who has a very big audience in Holland and in the Caribbean, they uh, contacted me and said, you know what, uh, why don't you start a show on our platform? And then uh, it started to become even more um, watched, also more listened. 
So I I still have I don't I don't have a YouTube channel. I have nothing actually, and I have some social media accounts in there, but most of them that are people around me created it for me because I say I have to be all on these platforms and all these things. I'm not interested because I don't want to even to to be on YouTube for instance. I don't want to put my energy in there. I focus most of the time on the material and putting it out there. And I'm I am going to start to see if I can get reach more audience um, on the Pika Pika platform because it's called Pika Pika platform, which is a um, um, hot pepper platform. If I if I can uh, translate it freely, and uh, um, I. I, I reach uh, I reach all, more or less thousand to thousand five hundred, and occasionally going up to two to three thousand uh, views a week. That's good. That's really yeah. good. Yeah, that is. But this are specifically for the Dutch audience, and um, uh, but I I want I just want it to be more because uh, it's not good enough. I do have you know what the funny thing is I do have people now in Holland because of my shows they are doing also the great work. I think I'm going to be bringing them also in, but that, this is something that I have to discuss. I have to think about it, how I'm going to be doing it. And as well, um, because I was talking to not only Derek, I was talking as well with, uh, with, uh, with Vuk, which is also part of the great one, one great world uh, net network and um, possibly see if we can um, have a European, European, um, um, a one great word network you can say uh, get francesco in there too from yes. italy yeah yes we need to we need to we need to start doing that so we can have the other languages as well there yeah and so we can reach europe because yeah. uh um yeah we need that as well we need that all over the world if we can do it in china uh, by all means let's do that but uh unfortunately i cannot speak chinese so of mm. mandarin so uh yeah that would be a challenge for me but i uh, officially speak uh four languages uh, of course the dutch is one of them uh, english and then we have spanish as well and i can i and then we have our own language which is a form of it's a form of portuguese it's, a, it's like 60 to 70 percent portuguese and uh but they call it pavimento uh and i have I have studied uh, Hebrew, but not in a sense that I can make a conversational, a conversation out of it. And I have studied, um, uh, I am a student of the Egyptian uh, uh, languages as well. Yes. Wow, fascinating. Um, the yeah. Middle, middle, yeah. Well versed. So, yes, the middle, middle dynasties. So I am, um, yeah, I'm busy uh, educating myself still. I'm still pretty Never much- ends. It never ends. Yeah, and uh, well, it it has been it has been fascinating to see my kids grow as well and see me. I love them. I love I love the idea that they can see me do this work as well, because then they know their father is. Uh, I'm I'm being part of the solution instead of being part of the problem. Yes, you know, great role modeling. Yeah. Yes, I'm trying. So this is how we do it, and it takes courage, like uh, because. Um, in Europe, all over the place, you can say you have this um, this this mandatory to send your kids to 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 school. So you have to have you have to have a strategy in place how to make sure that uh, you can still be valuable for the family and for your kids uh, without getting into trouble. But it it takes courage. Yes. Yes. It yes. takes courage, and you have to say no, no to the system because the schools like the school system. Is I don't know if people know this. The school system is a German system, the Nazi system. It is the way the 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 Nazis program the children to be Hitler's supporters. Yeah, to be followers. Same, this, yeah, it's the same. Follow it's the, same the master's system. orders, right? Yes, following the master's orders. So they are. That's why the school system creates creates. Um, uh, a follow order um, 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 order followers that's what the school system is doing nothing yeah. else it's so still why would so you, much why that... would you, yeah why would you want your kids to go there right i know i know it's painful it's, when you it's when painful. you realize it when you yeah. understand it it's so painful to, to yeah. see 
So it takes it takes a certain amount of courage. I know it's not it's not easy. It has not been it's still not easy for me. I mean you have to you have to have a plan. And uh, while you yourself are navigating and looking for answers, you have to make sure that they are taken care of and, and having enough material to, to start their own education, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it's a challenge, yes. And especially in this condition. But then, and then apart from that, you still need to work, you know? <laughs> it's it's yeah, not easy. I know we still have the monetary system where we're yeah. really dependent on getting that income and working yes. often, you know, outside the home. I've been working from home through the internet uh, in the over the last few years, yeah. which I've enjoyed being home, you know, more and more well, accessible and more flexible. But it, but it's it. There's downsides yeah. to that too, you know. Yes, but I prefer that ten thousand times. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say if you want to be a conscious doing conscious parenting, you have to come home. Yeah, you have to be. I agree. Uh, around your kids, I'm I'm continually around there, even though sometimes I'm focusing on the work. Mm -hmm. uh, because some things things need to to finish. Um, there is this constant um, um, balancing uh, of mm -hmm. giving your time to them and giving your time to your work. Yes, it's this constant battle of time actually. But you you need you really need. Sometimes I fail at giving them enough time. Other times I give them too much. You know, uh, so you you really need to have this. You know, find for yourself this balance. Time with your children really does matter because that is the foundation of experience. Exactly. You have experiences and with people, right? Exactly. exactly. And if it's not with you, it will be with someone else who has and the kids. And the funny thing is that the kids become so well, I wouldn't say so mature. I think in a in a sense they will become very mature because they talk to you. And I'm don't talk to them as though they are kids either. I just talk to them and say, you know what? Because I don't consider kids to be less. Um, intelligent. I agree. I don't consider yeah. that. For me, that is that is the the like the biggest mistake any parent can mm -hmm. to assume that their kids because they are kids they don't understand or because they are kids they can no. Uh, there are things I understand that you don't like bluntly tell your kids in in a sense, but in any case, you can tell them certain aspect of of things. You know, you can you can try to to bring it in an easy and comprehensible way, so they can start understanding what is going on here. You know, and then uh, uh, when they are go, they, the more conscious they become, the more the more you can you can give them, the more they can handle, the more you can give them. It's respectful so, too, and I think yeah. you know, so many kids are underseen. Their intelligence, their their capacities and skills are yeah. underseen because yeah. they're the school systems are just putting them into boxes and protocols, and they're not individualizing the no. the teaching at all. And yeah. kids don't even see themselves, you know, yeah. for the potential and the value that they are. And and exactly. that's a, that's a grave mistake, I think. And so so one of the things, for instance, uh, I do as well is like. Um, when I ask them to do something, and then I'm telling them, you're allowed to ask me why. I mean, like in in our culture, that like, kids are not allowed to ask why. I say why not? I'm not. I don't want them to be order followers. So I I can say you know what this is the reason why I wanted you to do it. I want to, right now you are part of the family. We have rules in the house, and one of these rules I I because. I'm not advocating for a system without rules. Freedom doesn't mean no rules. Freedom means uh, no rulers. That's what freedom means, no rulers. No, there are rules, you need rules. In fact, you need to make agreement in a family so as for it to be functional. Sure, and then okay. you have to have some internal structure exactly. uh, of, of moral behavior, which are exactly. internalized. As long as long as those rules are based in, in morality, yes, there's no problem. Yes. I remember, you know, as a kid, my mom saying, because I said so, oh, it would yeah, drive me I, crazy, right? Yes, I hated yes. that phrase. I, I just because said, I'm I never so, going to yeah, use yeah. that phrase with my own kids, no, you know? Don't use that. 
Don't use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know what you mean because my mom as well. Uh, like they they taught her, so now she's a score. Yeah. Of course, when I when I protest, they say yeah because I said so. Right, right, and that's it. Like final, where you know you just follow. Yeah, word. Just yeah. follow order. Execute yeah. order sixty six. Click. <laughs> Right. That is from yeah. Star Wars, by the way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of you know our you know. I think my family. My mom said she was raised by a, a lot by her grandmother, but it was very much kids are to be seen and not heard. Yeah. So, so kids were not seen as having really something to offer, even a family, the family, so much other than maybe do your chores, you know. Yeah. So it's sad that, that, and so that there are effects of that. There's, and I've, I've done a lot of my own reflection on, on my own, you know, psychological issues or whatever. And I can see the results of that type of family legacy of sort of yeah. neglect emotionally, like, you know, not getting feedback even about, um, you know, being a smart person or yeah. having an athletic ability you know yeah. it's it's sort of so if we need to help um kids to see their gifts and potential and importance yeah, yeah. yeah. i think we we a lot of parents neglect their kids um emotions as well but as well their, their talents maybe because they don't consider them actually i sometimes i even think that maybe uh, the parents don't consider them humans and that's what underlies this whole topic of slavery is yes. like somehow seeing people as not being human children yeah. as not being human yeah. women yeah. as not being human you just have to follow orders and that's it you know yeah yeah so uh, i'm not into that i am more into okay so explain to me what is it why are you doing this and uh, just give it like built up your, the the your 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 uh, give me the reason you know build up your uh, the, what they call the cast the casters so your 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 thought process just give it to me let me see what and then I can say okay so I understand that but this is a wrong thought pattern here is a wrong yeah. thought pattern this is immoral you know this is so because now he explains me his way of thinking now I can I can you know. You can help point out distortions and exactly. logical exactly. fallacies, and exactly. yeah, and and that's yeah. also going to help. You know, when it, for adults as well as children, when you use that type of Socratic questioning, or you in, you ask why or what's your thought process, then then as a person, I need to reflect, exactly. and I'm going to learn from my own yeah. self reflection that exactly. you know why i'm doing what i'm doing as opposed to just an automatic behavior exactly. so it's really important yeah um, so if we if if and i try to do that as much as possible and uh, but again i mean we are all human sometimes you fall back into this automatic thing because i said so mm -hmm. you know so you have to be you have to be very conscious when you are busy with them you have to be just conscious about how you're going to talk to them. Sometimes I have to really sit down before I talk even to them, sit down, think a little bit, and then, then go talk to them, you know? Check in on your emotionality. Exactly, exactly. Because sometimes it, it, sometimes they, it is my own fault maybe even, but sometimes you just, they, they, they respond to you. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they can even attack you with your own logic. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I hate when that happens. Yeah. They're mean, they're, they're calling mean. you out, right? Yeah. <laughs> My kids do that. They too. call you out. Exactly. They call you Can't out. Can't deny it. <laughs> so then you have to really be a be a be a parent, you know. Show them this is the way you should do it. I understand you, but this is also something they have to consider. Think about this, think about that, think about that. And then let's do it right, you know? And then uh so like my kids, like my youngest is eight years of age, and uh and he is making sarcastic joke, dark jokes. Like, grow, sometimes I even say grown-up jokes. But this is because they they starting to understand as well. Uh, they don't. They're they're not taught because I said so. They are. They look at things differently. They sometimes I even uh, I have to I have to. So for every parent who want to do this, it, it is this is a warning. 
uh, the kids don't want to play anymore with the kids that's like normally in the playground that you that you have in the playground. Like one time, one of my kids, uh, like the youngest one, came to me and says, "Well, uh, I said, okay, you need to go and play with other kids as well. Maybe you can, you know, get to know them." And so, so I went there. Like five minutes, uh, I think ten minutes stops. He came back. He says, yeah, let's go home. I said, but why? We just, we just came here. I just make all this effort to come, to come here and then you want to go home. He said, well, the kids are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, gosh, yeah. Which is also, I think personally, that is also, uh, so you're going to be excluding your kids in a, in a certain level. They will be excluded from the rest because they will not be able to, to communicate properly even with other kids this is the problem that that everybody is is indoctrinated a certain way yeah and so yeah. now i have to to tell my kids to teach them as well to to so you have to have a, a way to teach them as well to go along with other kids that are not at that level yet but you can still kind of like uh, uh have that that connection with them teach them that yeah it's tricky it's, it's a lot very of tricky. Yeah. yeah. So that is the way to have to navigate all these things. I didn't know, like these things come to me as they come. Right. And then you, you as a parent can say, okay, you know what? But I, I would love them to have friends. I mean, I don't, I don't want them to be without friends. But how am I going to be doing that? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So without, without telling them like, yeah, you have to obey this, this, uh, this teacher or you have to do this, you have to do that, you know? Right. So, Wow, so we've covered a lot and um, we could keep talking for a long time, but I think it's a good time to wrap up. Yes. Are yes. there some any points that you want to make sure um, that you highlight or that you haven't said and want to say anything you want to conclude with? No, uh, actually, what I wanted to say is, is that um, to the audience, actually, to to think about what we have talked about. Um, that slavery is not about color, that it is more than only about, like color racism is only one aspect of slavery. And it is a minuscule, a very little part of slavery about uh, of something that is way bigger than in scope than only the difference in color. Uh, just think about that. I'm not, I don't want to impose any thought to nobody. I don't want to, um, Say that this is the answer but just think about it for yourself and decide for yourself not to be part of the slave system yes. this is actually the the most important message that i have and the second part is to work on yourself there are from from the egyptian times uh like egypt the egyptians they were regarded as a very high in 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 a, in a civilization and they had also very high standards of morality, even though then at the end they failed miserably. But in the beginning, they, they thrived because of that. And there is a very specific uh, 11 step, they call it the 11 step, the 11 manual that you can really follow, which actually you will find that as well in the tarot, the studying of the tarot, which is the westernization of that, of that teaching, Egyptian teaching. And... Um, you have this like the, the 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 major arcana is those steps every card represents a step towards consciousness becoming a more conscious being you have the first 11 ones that is individual the individual it deals with the individual and the last 11 ones deals with the collectiveness so because every person individually if we follow these steps individually then collectively the other 11 steps follow for the, for the human race. So um, this is like literally what I wanted to say to people, freedom and self transformation, follow the truth and everything will be okay. And hopefully we will be on time as well because uh, <laughs> the way the world is going is, uh, you know, yeah, fast forwarding into more hell at this point. So yeah, yeah this is really important message and I 100% I agree, um, don't have anything more to add. Um, and it is come back to your own per individual self to take this information seriously, 
to reflect, do your own research, and uh, really do not be a part of the continuation of this master-slave dynamic. Step mm -hmm. out of it. And we need to create something um, new to do something differently. Yes. Yeah, so my, my, my personal... Uh, what I teach is self, the self, the better man of yourself. That is my focus of all my teachings, actually. And uh, my book talks about that and talks about as well what the fruit of that can be, which is an anarchic state, a totally freedom. Doesn't mean no rules, just means no rulers. And we can do if if we are the if the majority is 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 uh, of us are moral, we can have a a, a true free state. That is realize it is realizable. Yes, it's not something that is not realizable, and um, everything else failing us anyway. So I mean, why not change? Why it? not? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you, Glenn. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your day. I know you're very no, you busy. Thank you, Leslie. I'm um, very honored that you have invited me, and I thank you for everything, and thank you for your audience uh, for the time they have given us. And hopefully, we can talk uh, in the future again. We would will like that talking. very much. Yeah. Yes, uh, the collaborations are good. I really yes. appreciate them. So I appreciate it too. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for everybody who's tuning in. Um, spread the word. Check out Glenn's work. He does have some stuff in English, and I, I'm going to get at your book. Yes. So. Uh, when it's just finished, I will let you know. I will yes. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.